Before we get into today's video, I wanted to give a huge thank you to the channel sponsor as well as today's video sponsor, and that is Floodgate Games. And today I'm going to be talking about their newest game that is now officially out in retail as well as available on the Floodgate Games website, and that is Skyrockets. Skyrockets is a cooperative game for two to five players where players will be working together to put on the best fireworks show. They'll be doing this by playing down cards that have two different colors on them, and those colors represent the sand timers, and those sand timers represent the fireworks. So all players will be playing down at different cards, flipping over sand timers, and if ever a sand timer runs out, that represents a firework not really going off as planned, and eventually your audience will get bored and start to leave, which is not good. This is, like I said, a real-time game where you will be playing through a bunch of different scenarios, so you can go through all of them together. You can jump back and forth between different scenarios to try them out, go through the entire scenario, kind of like a campaign, and work together to finish all of them. But that is everything for Skyrockets. Definitely check it out if you are interested. And a huge thank you again to Floodgate Games. Hey friends, it is Jenna What Is Up and welcome back to the Board Game Garden and welcome to the first official sewing solo of 2024. So this is going to be all of the solo games that I played in the month of January, which I have some here. I also did want to chat about a few from December of 2023 because I don't think I ended up making a sewing solo for December. I also didn't do like a games I played in December video. Those two were kind of replaced with my like overview of 2023 video. Um, so there's a few from December that I wanted to chat about and share with you guys. And then I do have all of the games that I played solo in January. So if you guys are wanting to hear all about all those solo games, then just keep on watching. Give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoy. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you have to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. Comment down below all of the solo games that you played in the month of January. The prompt, the solo board game garden focus prompt for the month of January was the word warmth. So you guys will see a lot of like cozy, warm games this month that I played. Um, if you guys did not know about this whole board game garden monthly focus prompt, basically over on my Discord every single month, so I will be posting one very soon for February, but every single month of 2024, I will be posting a word of the month. The word for January was warmth. And then you can kind of choose from your collection what game kind of brings that kind of word to life for you. So for warmth, you guys will see, like I said, a lot of warm, cozy games that I played in January for the solo focus. But for other people, they might have been some different games. So I would love to hear what you played down in the comment section. And without further ado, let's get into today's video, shall we? I also have boba. Mm-hmm. So good. So good. All right, so starting off with the first three games that I wanted to chat about from December of 2023. So the first one I wanted to chat about, I think I've chatted about this game before, but I don't think I had ever played it solo until December. And it was one that I really wanted to get to the table solo because I really genuinely enjoy this series of games. This is Welcome to the Moon. So this was the third in the trilogy that started with Welcome to Your Perfect Home. Then there is Welcome to New Las Vegas. And then there is Welcome to the Moon. So I had only played this multiplayer and I had wanted to get it to the table solo, but I was kind of intimidated by it because there are a bunch of different um, sheets. I think there are eight different kind of sheets that you can play in Welcome to the Moon. So it kind of scared me to get started with it solo, but I ended up starting it solo in the month of December and I'm really happy that I did. Unfortunately, I didn't play it as much as I wanted to. Um, I still have only played the first two kind of sheets. I did want to jump into it solo for like the campaign because there is like a full campaign that you can go through with Welcome to the Moon where you can start with number one, go all the way to eight and kind of follow along on some sort of specific story. Um, but I unfortunately did not have time to do that in December. so. I'm really looking forward to jumping into this again for the future and to hopefully get to playing the campaign. Um, the solo Atoma is pretty simple in this one. You're just picking an Atoma and then they are just crossing off certain things um, throughout the game to kind of hinder you in different ways. It's very simple. 
um, not too complicated, and it's just a great roll and write with a lot of variability. So if you're looking for a roll and write that you want just a little bit more within the game, this one I feel like is a great bang for your buck because you're pretty much getting eight different roll and writes or actually it's a flip and write, eight different flip and writes within one game. And you can play it multiplayer, it's great multiplayer, you can play it solo, there's that campaign mode. So there's just a lot of ways to play this. So really happy that I jumped into Welcome to the Moon, but a little bit let down by the fact that I did not get started with the campaign, but I will be hopefully in the future if I can find time. Um, but yes, that is Welcome to the Moon. Also in December, I hopped into a game that I have had for a bit. And again, this one, the one thing that was holding me back from starting this one is that it is technically a spelling game, which I am not the best at spelling. I will be the first one to say. English was not my strong suit in high school. In any school, it was not my strong suit. Um, I did not like English very much. I was more of like a math and tech girl. Um, but anyways, the game that I'm talking about is Paperback Adventures. So I ended up getting sent the core box as well as the three expansions uh, to Paperback Adventures by Fower Games. So huge thank you to them for sending this over. I will say that they do have some more expansions for this coming out, hopefully in 2024 or being crowdfunded in 2024. And I think I might be covering it here on the channel. So you guys might see more of Paperback Adventures here on the channel. Um, but I will also say that I think every single one of the games that I'm talking about today, aside from one, I have streamed. So I will link all of the links down below to any of these games that I live streamed here on the Board Game Garden. So if you want to see how these specific games play, you can just click that link down below and you can go right to my live stream and watch a few rounds of me playing this solo um, over there so you can see if it's something that you would enjoy. But Yes, Paperback Adventures, I did do a live stream of, and like I said, I was kind of pushing off playing this because I've never been like the hugest fan of, there is a game from Fowers Games as well called Paperback, and that is a multiplayer spelling deck building game, and they kind of have built off of that and created Paperback Adventures, which I believe is a solo only game. So it's a solo only campaign or scenario driven game where basically you are fighting off monsters by spelling words. And honestly, I loved this. I loved this and I've been wanting to get it back to the table. I've only played with the damsel expansion um, or character box, but I do also have Ex Machina as well as Plath Hook, which is, or Plat Hook. Uh, which is like a pirate themed one. So I'm really excited to jump into those. I'm also just excited to jump back into the damsel because basically with Paperback Adventures, you are fighting off bosses within three different books. And it's kind of supposed to mimic a video game where you go for as long as you can survive. And then once you have died, unfortunately, you have to go back to the beginning. So getting this one to the table, you never really know if you're going to be playing a quick short game because you might die within the first few turns or you might actually last until the third book. So you never really know how long this one's gonna take. I don't know if there's some sort of way to like save your game, but I believe there might be. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but yeah, you never know how long it's going to be. It's very exciting because like I said, if you die, you have to go back to the, the beginning. So it's very fun. You are picking up different cards that have letters on them and you actually are doing a little bit of deck building in there where you are able to purchase more cards to help you. You're going to have different items that are going to help you, um, different abilities and stuff. And basically the letters that you are going to be picking up in your hand each turn are going to then attack the monster that you're fighting. So I do believe there are two monsters that you're fighting per book. So you have the first monster, which is kind of like the one before you fight the boss. So you have your two monsters each book and you're going to be attacking those monsters with the cards that you are using in your hand to spell different words, which I think is so cool. And I will say the one thing that helps this one is that you can do pretty well not spelling super long words. My thing is like, I'm not stupid, I know how to spell words, but my thing is seeing a bunch of letters and then trying to picture different words in my head that I can spell with those letters. So the more letters that I have in front of me, 
the more difficult it's going to be for me to actually try to think of a word. So in Paperback Adventures, you're actually only picking up four or five letters and spelling four or five letter words, which isn't as difficult as spelling like an eight letter word to me. Um, so that makes it a little bit more approachable. And then once you actually have the cards in your hand and you've spelt a word, the interesting thing about it is that the direction that you splay the cards, so if you splay them to the left or you splay them to the right, you can actually change the different icons that you're going to be using for that turn in order to either attack the boss or do some sort of special thing, um, gain some buying power, um, or even have some shields so that if the monster or boss is attacking you, you have some shields uh, in that case. And then also the top card, so either the first letter or the last letter, depending on how you splay the cards in your hand, is going to get you some sort of special ability. So uh, yeah, I think it's fair to say that I ended up really enjoying Paperback Adventures. I'm excited to play it more, and it was quite the surprise for me in December because, like I said, I was a little bit scared to start it, but once I learned how to play uh, and actually started playing, it was a lot more simple than I thought. So that is Paperback Adventures. Definitely recommend checking it out. Um, and also, the first few times that I played this, I did not win, just to let you know. Was not great at the game, but still enjoyed the game. And then lastly, for December, I did play a game that I ended up backing on Kickstarter, and uh, the creators of this game ended up reaching out to me and offering me to get my dog in the game as kind of like a payment for featuring it on the channel and doing some content on it. So Penny is in this game and it makes me so happy. And I was so incredibly excited when this showed up and I was able to actually find Penny's card and see Penny's card. Uh, but that game is Bark Avenue. So I ended up playing Bark Avenue solo in December. And I will say I enjoyed the solo very, very much. It's a great solo mode, but I think this game shines at a higher player count because the whole point of Bark Avenue is that you are competing against fellow dog walkers in New York. So you really want that feel of competition and having other people stealing the dogs that you want and other people kind of being in your way um, on the streets. And another thing is that the board of New York, if you're playing at, I believe two players, you actually cut off the board and only use half of New York instead of using the full New York. Um, it's the same in the solo game, so you're only using half the board, but at a higher player count, you get to use the full board. Um, I don't remember, this is one to five players. So I think this one would probably shine at four to five players. I do remember when I had the prototype of this, we played a I think it was either four or five player game at uh, Francis' sister's house, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it at the higher player counts. I still enjoyed it at the solo player count, but I do think that it uh, for sure shines at a higher player count just to mimic that more competition-like uh, game, but I really enjoy Bark Avenue. There's all of these different dog cards. It is a primarily pick up and deliver game where you are picking up dogs at different places around New York. You are walking around to different spots using different icons in order to give the dogs that you are walking the best possible walk that they could imagine by doing their favorite thing, by getting a picture of them for their owners, um, by getting them to take a poop and different things like that. You also have some different like personal objectives that you're going for. There's some like public objectives that you can gain stars for. And when you do gain a star, you take it off of your board that's going to unlock some more things. And I really enjoy this one. You are just basically trying to be the best dock walker in, I almost, I think I said dock walker, dog walker in New York. Uh, so yes, definitely recommend Bark Avenue. If you're looking for a game that plays really good solo and that's primarily how you're going to play this, I don't know if I would recommend, but if you are looking for a game to play with family, with friends, I definitely recommend uh, Bark Avenue. So that is the third and final game that I wanted to talk about in December. But let's move on to all of the games that I played in January which it was a very busy month. I did a lot of multiplayer gaming, so I didn't really have a ton of time 
to play solo. I also played one of these games quite a bit, which I will talk about. That kind of took up more time as well. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get into the games that I played in January. All right, so starting off with a pretty cozy game. Like I mentioned in January, the word of the month was warmth. So I wanted to play a game that kind of gave me that warm, cozy feeling. And what not better than Yakmok the Winter Market, which this was sent to me by WizKids. So a huge thank you to them. Um, but this is a game for, I have the box upside down, um, but I'm pretty sure it's one to four players. Where does it say? One to five players, awesome. So Yakmok is one to five players. And I believe Yakmok, Jokmok, I don't know how to pronounce it, but it is somewhere in Sweden, possibly, where basically they have a winter market um, where you are walking around and purchasing different cozy goods in this cozy winter market. For some reason, there's like, obviously when you go to winter market, like we have a winter market here in Canada, in Toronto called the Christmas market that they have around Christmas time. And it kind of reminds me of this where there's just a bunch of like handmade goods and like little hot chocolate stands and different things like that. And it's so much fun to walk around. You are walking around outside freezing cold, but there's still something so warm about it. There's like lights and just, I don't know. There's, you are freezing, but you're cozy at the same time. It's weird. Uh, but anyways, this game just gives me that cozy vibe and I love it. It is a pretty straightforward, simple drafting game where you are going to be going around this little rondelle and picking up cards and all of those different cards are going to be scoring in different ways. And there are a ton of different types of cards and you can kind of mix and match the different types of cards uh, when you play the game. So you can kind of change up the different cards that you use per play. Um, there are some that they like recommend for first plays, but then there's some more difficult scoring cards and different things like that. Um, so you can change up each play uh, what cards you're going to use. With the drafting element, you are doing, I don't know what the exact mechanism is, but it's basically whoever is last goes first. So the farther you go ahead of people, the longer it's going to take for you to then be the next last player in order to move that piece again. So each player does have two meeples and you're going to be moving as far forward as you want. Like I said, the further you move forward, the longer it's going to be until you get another turn. So you're gonna move forward and you're gonna grab the card from that space. The next person in last then goes, so on and so forth until all the cards are gone. And then everyone's going to be scoring all the cards in different ways. There's one called patchwork, which you're kind of making this like full on tableau of patchwork cards. And then there's some that just simply score a certain amount of victory points. There's some that are going to score you for uh, like combinations of croissants and coffee. I believe those are the two or cinnamon buns and coffee for every like pair of those. and. Uh, the snowflakes, whoever has the majority of each color of snowflake are going to gain victory points. There's so many different types of cards in this that score in very different ways. There's also ones that kind of have a little bit of player interaction as well. So yes, the solo mode is very simple where you're just playing against a bunch of AIs. I think you can actually the more AIs that you play against, the more difficult it is. So you can kind of adjust the difficulty depending on how many AIs you play against. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed it. Very simple, straightforward game, but it's very cozy, very cute. And if you are looking for a nice drafting card game, then this is the one to check out. So that is Yokmok, the Winter Market. All right, so moving on to the next game. This is a very small game. Um, and this is actually the only one that I have not made a live stream or didn't do a live stream of, but that is a button shy game and this is Numpsters. So if you guys have not heard of Numpsters yet, definitely recommend. Um, Jamie from Foster the Meeple as well as Michelle from Second Star to the Left, both of them talk about this one very highly. So when I was reached out to by uh, Long from Button Shy Games and he asked like, what games would you like to try? Um, I actually picked up a bunch from Pax and Plug. So a huge shout out to Long and the Button Shy Games crew. Um, but Numpsters was definitely one that I was like, I need to try it because Jamie and Michelle have spoke so highly of it. Um, it has some similarities to uh, Food Chain Island, but it's very, very different. Um, and it kind of reminds me a little bit of a game that I played 
last time I was at Level Up, which actually, let me take a little quick break here to let you guys know and share with you that I am going to Level Up Retreat next week. So if you guys are in the New Jersey Woodbridge area next week from February 2nd to 4th, I definitely recommend uh, joining for Level Up Retreat. Level Up is honestly a convention like no others I've been to. I went to it last year and like I said many, many times, I think Level Up was my favorite convention that I went to last year because literally from Friday to Sunday, all I did was play games and that is exactly what I want to do at a convention. Obviously it's great at other conventions to go and walk around at different booths and stuff, but ultimately as board gamers, we just want to play board games and having a convention that you can go to that you can just play board games is like the best thing ever. So I am so happy to be going again this year and letting you guys know. And if you are free next weekend, February 2nd to 4th, definitely consider joining. And also I do have a discount code if you guys want to use it. It is Jenna2024. So if you are interested in joining and coming and hanging out, playing some games, then I will put the link down below to the website. Also, I will put my discount code down below as well for you guys to get $10 off your badge. But I quickly just wanted to mention that one there because I really, really enjoyed Level Up and would love for you guys to join. But anyways, back to Numpsters. It does remind me of a game that I played last year at Level Up, and that is a game called... Uh, Dust Biters, I think, where it is not a solo game. Uh, Numpsters is a solo game, but in Dust Biters, you are um, like, you have a row of different cars on both sides, and it's kind of a 1v1 kind of game. And that kind of reminded me of this, but still, it's very different from that as well. Um, but basically, you have a row of Numpsters. They are different numbered monsters, and they are all going to have some different. Ability, you can also play this in your hand, which I think is very cool. Um, let me put this up here while I talk about it. Good enough, there we go. Um, you can also play this one in your hand, which I think is very cool, but um, basically you have the eight, which you never want the eight to be like discarded or gotten rid of. Um, and you want the eight to be like the finishing card or like at the end with one other card. So basically you are trying to get the eight to be in between sequential numbers. So for example, if I, the beginning of a turn, you can actually move one card from one space to another, or you can shift a card, um, different things like that. And you actually have to make the eight uh, be in the center of sequential numbers, like I said. So for example, if I had the eight in between the four and the five, then the four would eat the five, the five would get discarded, and you would put out a new card. And you were trying to just get rid of all of these cards, and then you're trying to have the eight and one other number be the last two cards in your hand, which it's very difficult. It sounds a lot more simple than it is. I've only won it once, and I played it like five or six times in January. Um, so it's very difficult. But also, you can, if you don't have any sequential numbers, you can actually use the far right card. I was playing it just in front of me, but if it is in your hand, it would be the card that is the top of your hand or like the, the one closest to you. Um, you can actually use its special ability. So the special ability will be like a single digit number will eat a double digit number. So it makes it a little bit easier if you don't have those sequential numbers. But again, at the beginning of a turn, you can move one card somewhere else or different things like that to kind of shift and move around the cards in your hand. So I haven't played this just in my hand yet. I've always played it like in front of me, but I think if you're just like traveling, you can play this like in the car, you can play it at the airport. I will most likely be bringing this with me to the airport uh, at level up. So very excited for that. Um, that is Numpsters. Definitely recommend if you have not, if you're a button shy fan and you've not gotten Numpsters yet, Definitely recommend. I do think it's sold out right now, but I think they have like a pre-order for it right now. Recommend very, very much. Moving on to the next game. This one, again, gives me those warm, cozy vibes. That's the reason why I decided to play it in January because it matched with the warm vibes. Um, but that game is Mycelia. So Mycelia was um, gifted to me by Ravensburger. So a huge thank you to them. They actually sent over this very cute uh, package that had this little mushroom mug and some tea 
as well as, what else was there? Some stickers as well. Um, but Mycelia is a fairly simple, straightforward game. It plays one to four players. I'm really happy that this has a solo mode because it works great as a solo game. But it is pretty easy game. It says nine plus, so you can play these with uh, kids or this with kids, but it is a primarily deck building game where you are building up a deck of cards or a hand of cards that are going to allow you to move these different dewdrops on your personal board. So everyone starts with dewdrops on their board. It's a little like grid board. So you have a bunch of different terrain and you are trying to move different dewdrops to different terrain in order to move it all to one grid space that is going to be a little like tornado. What are those things called? A little portal. It's a little portal. That's the word. It's a little portal that you're trying to get all of your dewdrops to and that portal leads to this little like shrine so you're trying to get them off of your board and into the shrine and it is a race so the first person that is able to get all of their dewdrops on their board off of their board is the winner i have not played this multiplayer yet but i do imagine that it would be very good multiplayer um, a pretty simple easy quick snappy game where you are picking up cards using those cards to either move your dewdrops, or you also get buying power in order to buy more cards. A very, very good like intro deck building game, I think. Um, but it also has that like little board and like moving those dewdrops around. So I really, really like this one. The art in it is fantastic. So if you are looking for a game to kind of bring you into more difficult deck building games, if you're looking for a deck building game to play with your family or with some younger children, not super young, um, nine plus, I definitely recommend Mycelia. Even if you're like an adult like me and you just want a good solo game, a really good puzzly solo game, I definitely recommend this one. I think this one was probably my favorite for the month thus far. I really enjoyed Mycelia. I think the next one that I'm going to talk about is probably my favorite of the month, but I think this one is a close second because I really enjoyed it. So that is my Celia. Moving on to the next and final game. Like I said, this one was probably my favorite of the month. I played this, I think four times throughout the month. It is like a, not a bigger game because it's very easy to set up and take down, but it does feel like a big experience. Um, but that game, you guys saw me do a bunch of videos on it this month. Um, that game is Mythwind. Oh my goodness, I love this game so much. So Mythwind is a game really like any other that I have really played thus far because there's not really like a, an end to the game. It's kind of similar to, I've said this before, kind of like an Animal Crossing or a Stardew Valley. I would kind of refer to it more Animal Crossing-esque because in Animal Crossing, you can always just go back to that game and just play it, continue to work on your island, um, talk with all of the villagers, and just kind of discover more and more about the Animal Crossing world, which is similar to Mythwind, where there's not really an end to it. You can kind of continue to play it. Obviously, um, like you do have a certain amount of event cards and stuff like that. So if you eventually get through all of the event cards, then yes, that's kind of a little bit of like an ending and you might have like that feeling of being finished with the game, but there's not really any sort of thing that's going to tell you um, or kind of push you in a direction to a definitive ending, if that makes sense, which I think is very cool. I'm a huge fan of Animal Crossing and I just love the feeling of just like working on something to like build it up. I don't have to have some sort of like definitive ending to a game. I don't have to feel like I'm working towards one finishing thing. I don't need combat. I don't need like, I don't need all of that, you know? I just wanna be cozy. Anyways, in Mythwind, you are playing as a character. It is a cooperative game if you're playing multiplayer and everyone is playing a different character. And each character is going to be playing completely different. Um, so in the base game, there are four characters. There is the crafter, which was the one that I was playing. There is the merchant, the farmer, as well as the ranger. And then I do have the expansion that adds the innkeeper. So there are five different characters that you can play and each character kind of has a 
mechanism and different way that it's going to play. Like I said, I was playing the crafter, which you are refining different goods in order to sell those goods to customers. And uh, it's kind of like a bag builder in a way, as you are gaining the different resources, restocking the different resources, and then pulling those out of the bag to then put them into your inventory and refine them more and more to make them better and worth more. Um, and then you're going to be fulfilling these different requests in order to gain money. So I really enjoyed that. And the cool thing about playing this solo, and honestly, I think it's the same for multiplayer, is you can play through seasons. So there you play through spring, summer, fall, winter, then you go into spring, summer, fall, winter again. And at the end of each season, you can actually decide to change characters. So if you're playing multiplayer, you can decide to swap characters with somebody. Um, you continue to go from where they left off. Um, but in a solo game as well, at the end of each season, you can decide to switch a character. I've decided to stay with the crafter for my first year. I'm finished my first year now, so I think I'm going to switch to another character and try a different character. And basically you are just working on uh, this story. You're, you know, finding out new things about Mythwind, the world of Mythwind with all of these different magical creatures. Um, you are unlocking different things. Um, it's a very, not super story heavy because there is a lot of like, building up your village and stuff as well, which has that feel of a Euro-ish where you are going to a spot, it is worker placement, so you're placing your worker on a certain building, doing something, you are gaining resources, using those resources to build buildings, and kind of working up and building up your village. So there's still those like Euro mechanisms in there, but it still has a lot of that story where you're going on different adventures, reading cards, um, it, different events are going to happen, so you're going to read those cards as well. So for me, after all of that, I have immensely enjoyed Mythwind. I love it very, very much. I've heard some mixed things about it. A lot of people are not sure about the whole no ending, not really having anything to work towards. You do actually have some like goals and stuff that you're working towards each season, um, and that's going to help you gain more things and kind of, you know, work up your village again. Um, so you do have those goals that you're working towards each month, which or each season, which I really enjoy. But like I said, I don't need any like, you know, finishing thing that I need to like work towards. And I also heard someone touch on the fact that with more players, you're obviously making more money. Thus, you can um, kind of work on the village and kind of progress through things quicker, which that is definitely not the case. Like I, as a solo player, only making money myself. I have made a ton of progress with the game. I feel like you can do almost as much in a solo game as you can with a four player game because honestly most of the time when you are playing with your character the money that you're making I think honestly I have not because basically with the money that you're making as each character you are going to have an option to spend that money in order to gain different resources um, so I think each character, each type of resource is going to be uh, like worth a certain amount. So for my character, I think I can spend five coins in order to add a food resource, I think, or one of the four resources, I can spend five coins in order to do that. I have not done that once. I have really just been using my money for different things. You can use your money to gain different workers. You can use your money for different things. You don't have to use your money to gain those resources. And honestly, I feel like in a multiplayer game, everyone would kind of be using their money for their own things. They're not going to be all putting their money towards these resources to work on the village. There's other things that you can spend your money on. So really, I think the, the progression of all of the different player counts is pretty much the same, um, so I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, but anyways, I'm gonna stop yapping about Mythwind. It was probably my favorite of the month. I absolutely love this game and I'm so excited to dive into it more. It's easy to set up, it's easy to take down, it's like a five minute setup, not even. So yes, that is everything for Mythwind uh, and that is I believe everything for the video. So hey friends, so it is now present day Jenna and I actually just played a solo game today, so I really wanted to include this in the video. So this is a wonderful game that, like I said, I just played today. So this is Moon. 
Moon is from Sinister Fish Games, which they did send me this, so huge thank you to them. Um, but Moon is a pick and pass game, which I didn't think or didn't know that this mechanic was called pick and pass. I always said it was a closed drafting game, which I think both are correct, but it is primarily a pick and pass game. So one of those games where you have a hand of cards, you're gonna take one, you're gonna pass it to the next person. Um, but in the solo mode of this game, you are just going through different piles. So it is mimicking the feel of a pick and pass game, but it is solo, you're playing against an AI player. Um, I did live stream this one this morning, so I will have the live stream link for this one as well, but I really wanted to include it because I enjoyed this game very, very much. Um, it kind of gave me similar vibes to games, uh, actually really just one game, and that is It's a Wonderful World. So I'm really excited to play this one a multiplayer because I and Frances has enjoyed It's a Wonderful World as well. Our friends have enjoyed It's a Wonderful World. So I do think that this one is going to be a hit multiplayer. Really enjoyed it solo. I do think that this one is going to shine multiplayer for sure. Um, I've only heard, some people have said that it's a little bit annoying because typically in a pick and pass game, you want it to go pretty snappy. So everyone's gonna get those cards. You're gonna pick one, you're gonna pass it. You're gonna pick one, you're gonna pass it. So typically those pick and pass games are pretty snappy, but with this one, sometimes some cards you're going to need to do some sort of action for. So there's a little bit of that pause in between. Um, some people have said with these pick and pass games as well, I've heard a lot of people say it with like Seven Wonders and stuff that if some people do it quicker, then people can kind of get lost and not know what pile is for them next. And somebody might have like a backlog of uh, piles in front of them if the person to their right or left has been picking things quicker and stuff like that. But I feel like this one, if you keep it organized, it will still go pretty quick and snappy. The actions that you're taking in between aren't super long. Like some of them are maybe going to get you a resource or some of them, actually there's some of them that like allow you to do some things. And then sometimes once you've played something down, it'll then trigger you to be able to get one of the um, like objectives, public objectives. But I don't think the actions are going to take a crazy amount of time that are really going to disrupt the flow of that pick and pass mechanism. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I wanted to include it in this video. So uh, yeah, huge thank you again to Sinister Fish for sending this over. Um, and I'm so happy that I finally played it because it's been on my shelf of opportunity for a while. It is a 2023 release and yeah. That is Moon. All right, friends. So I'm just going to continue this and finish off the video um, today. I think I've already filmed an outro, but it's fine. They're easy. Um, so anyways, thank you all so, so much for hanging out with me today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing all of the games that I played solo in January as well as uh, December. I thought I'd add those at the beginning as well. But if you did enjoy, please give this video a big thumbs up. Also hit the subscribe button down below if you've yet to do so. We'd love to have you here in the garden. Comment down below, like I mentioned in the intro, any games that you played solo in the month of January. Did you play along with the prompt, which is warmth? Let me know what games uh, you chose based off of the prompt warmth. I would love to know that down below. If you didn't play along with the prompt warmth, just let me know what solo games you played. Maybe make them or have an excuse for why they would fit in with warmth. That would be fun. Uh, but yeah, I love you guys so, so much. Remember, you are somebody's reason to smile, and I will see you in the next board game video. Bye, guys.